Okay, so we are here on France at uh, Bedouin, the base of Mont Ventoux. We're kind of get crashing uh, Rough Rider documentary. Uh, unfortunately, that means we've got to ride up Ventoux today as well. Uh, but it's in the company of none other than Johnny Gunn. Oh, and Paul Kimmage. So, uh, yeah, should be a good day. This guy is Scorchio and uh, we're riding up a big hill, but not on the big chain ring. Overnight. So we are here at a major French race that's happening in July. Apparently it's an annual event and uh, lots of people seem to find out about it as well so we're going to speak to a few fans and see what on earth brings them here to this Scorchio climb. We found a couple of people who also couldn't afford to go to the Tour of Poland. So, uh, we'll start here with the, the climbing force. Uh, what's your name? Sam. And what are you doing here? Hope to watch the Tour de France. And who are you hoping is going to win today? Froome. Froome. Is he famous? <laughs> yeah. Who does he play for? <laughs> Do you think it's maybe not a stage for Cav? Uh, I think it's definitely not a stage for Cav. I think he may struggle. I don't think it'll be a sprint finish. <laughs> okay, so when they enter the velodrome at the top, you think Cav's going to be way behind? <laughs> yes, I think he'll be struggling to make the cutoff after today's stage. Okay, so how far up the mountain are you going to ride today? Uh, as far up as the edge of the tree line, so we can sit and wait in the shade. Vive la France! Bon, ben nous, euh, <laughs> vos opinions de la vainquée chaque jour? C'est pas mal, c'est pas mal. Bon, euh, les pentes sont encore euh, légères. Et, euh, et vos fleurs? Nous, notre victoire, c'est le Ricard. Euh, quand euh, goût de Ricard, goût de victoire. Et le, le victoire. En Paris euh, Paris, euh... Allez, on va être chauvin, euh, Pierre Roland. Pierre Roland euh, Si. Euh, Proum va tomber euh, dans l'Alpe d'Huez, Proum va tomber. Les, les Irlandais d'Allemagne euh, Les Irlandais Vous êtes Irlandais Oui. Ah Ah Ryan. Ah Ah Together standing tall To show To show Let's go Hi, let's go It's fantastic Okay, so I managed to locate a couple of Jack Russells here um, Could you tell me the dog's names? This is Daisy Dog, she's two years old It's her second Tour de France uh -huh. And down here we have Bumble Dog She's 16 and a half years old And it's her sixth Tour de France. Wow, six Tour de France. And, yes. and uh, who are they hoping to see win today? Vava Vava Voom. Froom Dog. Uh, my name's Adrian uh, from Benigo in Australia and uh, up here with some mates enjoying the atmosphere of the tour, of course. Excellent. And who's your, your main guy today? Um, uh, as long as Contador doesn't win, that will make me happy, but uh, I, th I don't think any Aussies are going to take, take the win today. Okay, what do you think about Cadell overall? Oh, look, he's won a title, so if he doesn't have the best year, I'm happy to forgive him because he's done all right for the country. Okay, and uh, Orica Green Edge, are you expecting any more stages from them uh, this coming week? Um, oh, I hope so. They've probably done enough for us, so we were there when they won the TT, so um, okay. we're very happy to be Aussies when they did that for us, so um, we're happy with the performance thus far. Okay, and are you going to any other stages? Um, no, we're just about done. A couple of mates are heading up to Alpe d'Huez to watch that stage, and um, we'll see where we go from there, but we're heading to Paris. Okay, and have you ever been interviewed by an Irishman's thumb before? Um, not interviewed, but I have had access to an Irishman's thumb before. Okay, yes. that, that's a pretty privileged position you're in there. <laughs> oh, look, I feel very privileged, thank you. Okay, and um, 
How would you compare uh, Bendigo to the locale here? Look, Bendigo is very nice. It's a great bike bike uh, riding town, but it's probably not quite like this. This is like uh, Bendigo on massive amounts of EPA. Doping, etc. More of it. From the past and now, Chris Froome did it. By Jovi, he battled with constant speculation regarding his accent by slowly pulling back the Safa, and by the end of three weeks he was as English as a flash flood in July. The task was made considerably harder by the lack of team support as they had been focused on the Tour de France. Having confessed to not actually being that good after all, former fake winner of six consecutive green jerseys, Eric Z Z Zabel has been suspended by Katusha and has resigned from his position in the Council of Professional Cycling, UCI. Gianni Bugno, who heads the CCP, stated that there is no place for any other former dopers in the organization of clean young men. Sean Kelly, reinstated as winner of five green jerseys, stated, I love my big house. Zabel also apologized for the quality of his previous apologies. The former cyclist Sir Bradley Wiggins has resurfaced after weeks of uncertainty to lead his team to the foot of climbs in the Tour of Poland. Wishing to add the Vuelta to the list of Grand Tours he has no interest in, Big Wig has made the World Time Trial Championship his focus for the year. Chris Froome has texted Bradley to say, The ASO have announced a change to the regulations relating to team jerseys. From 2014, a rider may wear a team kit marked with two big orange handprints to allow fans to push riders without exacerbating their injuries. The move came after Team Sky's Garant Thomas complained that fans were pushing his lower back, scene of a broken pelvis which Thomas had endured through most of the race. In a move sure to cast no further doubt on his integrity and wish for a happy ending, outgoing UCI president Pad Thai McQuaid has been assisted by the Malaysian Federation proposing a backdated amendment to the UCI constitution, allowing him, I mean anyone, to be Thai and Moroccan Federation members in order to, you know, the truth is too much to bear. Let's leave it there. Mumtaz. You rock my heart. That you know it, you rock my heart. So baby, control me. You rock my heart. That you know it, you rock my heart. Feels out of control, feels out of control. Jennifer Sage here from uh, Viva Travels. Uh, Jennifer leads groups who are following the Tour de France. Um, diverse range of cyclists from many parts of the world. So we're just going to speak to Jennifer and um, maybe get some tips on uh, what to do if you're riding in Europe for the first time. 
So Jennifer, how's the trip been so far for you? Pretty awesome. We climbed Vontu yesterday. Well, we didn't make it to the top because they made us get off our bikes, but we, that's how we started. And we got Alpuez in a couple of days, so we're going to go easy today and then prepare for Alpuez. The riders who come on your tours, is there any particular advice that um, you find uh, would be useful for anyone else, say, coming over to the Alps for the first time and riding the big climbs? Um, train. <laughs> Although I should say, believe it or not, I've, I've had some people come on tours who their only training was spinning classes. And they climbed Alp d'Huez and, and Galibier and, and Colombier. And, uh, but it, it does, but they trained a lot indoors. So it is possible, you, you know. It's, I don't necessarily bring, you know, really elite racers or anything. They're, they're just normal people who want to do fun things. And how do you find they cope with. Um Firstly, the duration of the climbs, but also the heat that you can find on some of these big climbs. Ooh, well, the heat is hard, especially if you're not from somewhere that's pretty hot. Like, I'm not, so I suffered in the heat. But, um, you know, when you get to the Alps, it's normally not a problem with it really hot temperatures. But really, you know, you just got to be careful, hydrate and take your time because we don't race it's not a race up there although some people get competitive with themselves and, um, on, on that note I have a kind of a sort of a funny story in 2005 I brought a group and we did um, Alpe d'Huez and this is back when uh, Lance and Cheryl were still together I think or just shortly after that they were not and my group's only goal was to beat Cheryl Crow's time up Alp Duez, which was 136, I think. And uh, half of them did and half didn't. I, I just barely squeaked out at 132. <laughs> With the benefit of hindsight, we're not sure whether Cheryl might have had any advantage there. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I never thought about it that way, but she did have a $10,000 Madone and, um, and a good coach. <laughs> and from your work with the Indoor Cycling Association, would you recommend that people basically copy indoor cycling in that they try and ride out Duez on a fixed gear? <laughs> well, <clears throat> fixed gear, I mean, you can alternate the, the, the resistance indoor. Um, you know, when I teach indoor cycling, when I teach instructors how to teach indoor cycling, because that's what I do is I train instructors and educate them, we try to I have a philosophy of keeping it real. See, there's a lot of bad instructors out there who do push-ups on a bike and squats and stuff. So we just bring the outdoors in, indoors and try to simulate a real climb and like Bantu or Alpe d'Huez and, and at the moment we're we're situated in wonderful wine country is this part of the attraction that your group sees? Absolutely I mean we're, we're going to probably do a little wine tasting tomorrow with my group um, towards the end of our ride of course it's a little bit better I mean here we are in Gigondas, Baccarat, Chateau of Dupap is nearby so You'd be, we'd be remiss not to enjoy some of the wonderful things that they have here. And, and allegedly, from personal experience, I find that if it was true, riding up on two in the heat might possibly help the post wine tasting. <laughs> well, it certainly gives you a reason to to, to celebrate. Um, you probably need less wine to feel it. <laughs> And it's funny because at the side of the road on Vontu yesterday, allegedly someone who may or may not be called Johnny Gunn was actually being sick at the side of the road. <laughs> Have you heard anything similar to that? You know what? It was in the paper this morning. Okay. Yeah, I, he might not have seen that, but I saw it in the paper. Okay, front page of a cape. <laughs> yes.